Hello, my name is Markus Stahl and I am an automation engineer at Deutsche Post RS. We are a member of the Robot Framework Foundation and we use Robot Framework since almost seven years now. Today I would like to show you the Kamunda library, which we first developed for ourselves and then released open source in November 2020. But first, a few words about Kamunda. Kamunda is a workflow management system and it was originally forked from activity in 2000. 13. It visualizes processes in VPMN, the so-called business process modeling notation. And this visualization is one of the greatest benefits about Kamunda. We have something similar in Robot Framework, like if you can describe your test case, it's not only documented, but it's also at the same time executable. The documentation is executable. The same counts for processes in Kamunda. Like, if you are able to model your process in VPNN, it's documented and it's also executable. Kamunda also enables business roles to actively manage productive processes. And at the same time, it helps engineers to focus on the actual task implementation. Kamunda comes with a really rich set of features. But also, it integrates users into automated processes, so-called human tasks. Let's have a look at a few keywords from the Kamunda library. There are more keywords available, but those are the most commonly used ones. So first there's the deploy mo model from file keyword, which uploads a given model to a Kamunda engine. Then there's the start process keyword, which obviously starts a process instance to, from a given model. Then there's the fetch workload keyword, which fetches the variables from a given topic. And then the, you do some processing. So every robot task has a purpose. So this is not a Kamunda library keyword. This is something you usually implement by yourself. And once you're finished, you call the complete task keyword and return optionally some result variables that you want the process instance to contain. The benefit of visualizing a process is that you can see immediately the sequence of tasks. Like in this example, these are tasks that belong to a process and you will see the process in a second. Um, but here you see a task suite and you see all tasks in a sequence. But you cannot say if a few tasks of them or if any of them run in parallel and what the actual sequence flow is because we can run each of the tasks individually. So a text file is not suitable for describing a process. It's great for describing a task, but not a process. So have a look at Kamunda. When we have a look at the process model itself, we can easily understand how the process model works. In the beginning, we have a start event. It's called new picture of champion received. And the first task is loading the file from FTP server and adding it to the process itself. Afterwards, we have even parallel tasks. One task in the lower branch where we throw a dice because we can. And on the upper branch, we have two tasks. The first task read text with OCR, where we try to identify the text from the image. And a second task that tries to identify if this text contains a champion. And when all those branches join, there's a decision to be made. Is this champion known? If yes, then the process ends with no champion identified. And if the champion is not known yet, there's even a manual task where we investigate the new champion. Let me show you the test data first. So we have three images, one with the text Kamunda, one with Robocop, and one with Robot Framework. And we use OCR in order to identify the text in those images. Let's start the process. So we have here our robot task, only with a few keywords and we have the Kamunda engine running in our local Docker environment and let's start the process. You can see here it's a normal robot task called from the command line and if we now go back to our model we can see that there are new process instances started. Let's start the first task that is loading a file into the process. Again it's just a normal robot task and it ended quickly. Let's check the process, how it looks like. As we can see here, one workload has been processed by the robot task and split up afterwards into the parallel branches. So we now have a, a workload for throwing a dice and we, we have a workload for reading text with OCR. 
Let's do OCR first. So we have again a small robot task that fetches the workload from Camunda and sends it to an OCR service that is wrapped here in this self-written library. And since this is a service that runs in a, in a Kubernetes environment, and since OCR takes some time, this task will take a few seconds. So we start the task, it fetches the workload, processes it, and once it's finished, it sends the result back to Camunda. As you can see here, the workload moved on, and now we have two tasks available. We can either identify the champion in the text or throw a dice. Let's throw the dice first. So again, we have a very simple robot task. This one's even simpler and just generates a random number between one and six and gives it back to Commander. Let's run the task. This should be super quick. It's finished. In the cockpit, the process instance seemed to have disappeared, but if we have a closer look, we can see that it's still there. If we click on the process instance, we can see that the lower part is actually waiting at the conjunction and it passed the task throwing a dice. It even got a five. And the upper part is waiting at identifying a champion and it got the text Kamunda from the OCR service. Let's validate if the text result from the OCR service contains a known automation champion. Since we are here at Robocon, we are aware of two champions already. That's Robot Framework itself and Robocorp. And we just check and evaluate if the text result contains one of the two names. Let's start the task. That passed quite quickly. Let's go back to the cockpit from Kamunda. So here we can see that our process instance somehow got passed on to the manual user task investigate. So what happened? Our OCR text result was Kamunda and somehow Kamunda was not identified as a known champion. That's why the process instance went on to investigate. What are we going to do with the manual user task? So first we open the task list in Kamunda and there we can see that there's a manual task waiting for us. First we claim it and then we load the data from the process instance and we check that Kamunda is actually a known champion for automation and then we can complete it. But wait, we can also change the result from the dice. I like to have a six and then we complete the, the task. And if we now go back to the cockpit then we can see that our process has finished and only the other two process instances with the pictures from Robot Framework and Robocorp are still left in the model. Instead of playing to our remaining two examples, let's put a little bit of pressure on our setup. So here we have 600 process instances waiting for our robot tasks to start. So that's what we are going to do. We start our robot processes once and they are all fetching and processing and completing their, their workloads and giving it back to Kamunda. The robot tasks basically run endless, so as long as there are workloads available in Kamunda, they fetch new workload and process it. And when all robot tasks are running, we can go back to the Kamunda cockpit and enjoy being an automation engineer and just pressing re page refresh all the time and watch the process work. So this is going on now for a while and you can see that all the workloads are going down the process flow and that uh, they are processed uh, in different paces. So for example, OCR takes some time. So there are a lot of workloads piling up and throwing a dice is quite quick. So this is finished much earlier. Now we can come to the conclusion that Camunda and Robot Framework are a great fit. Robot Framework is great for task automation and Camunda is great for process orchestration. Now, Kamuna is available in an Enterprise Edition, but its greatest competitor is its own Community Edition. And everything you have seen here and much more is possible even alone with a Community Edition that it's free of charge and also open source. I hope you found this lightning talk interesting. And if you would like to learn more about Kamuna Library, follow me on LinkedIn. Also, check out our repository on GitLab where we from Deutsche Post Address published the Camunda library under open source license. Hey Marcus, welcome back to Robocon. Thank you very much. Hi, Joe. Awesome, great to have you back. All right, let's jump into the questions. Uh, first one is from Trisna. Let's know what makes, what's the difference between Camunda and UiPath? 
Whoa, uh, a lot probably because uh, the, you, the way I use Kamunda, you can view Kamunda as a huge message queue, and the automation and implementation itself is done in in Robot Framework. So it's Kamunda is like like I showed yesterday. It's it's a piece in my tool stack for uh, for uh, process automation, and it's not the full complete stack. So your iPath offers a complete stack, and Kamunda is just one piece, and its sole purpose is not. Uh, RPA, but uh, thing. it was originally meant for uh, for Java developers for slicing monoliths into microservices. So there are multiple purposes for for Comunda. It's a good point about bringing up about Java. Someone asked, uh, "Pierce Comunda appears to be more geared towards Java developers. How does it work with Python?" Uh, it works with any language because since a few versions, they have uh, this really rich REST API, and you can do everything. Uh, through this REST API. And they also uh, have an uh, open API specification, and that's how I created the library. You can easily generate a Python client from this uh, open, R open API specification and build your keywords around it. So you, you can do this in, in any language. And uh, yeah, the only difficulty is when you look for documentation, uh, sometimes you end up in some some I mean, Java uh, uh, explanations, and you have to translate it into this external task mm -hmm. pattern that uh, we use with the REST API. So are there any limitations with this approach? Like, can you do all kinds of fetching? Like, what's, what's uh, any limitations in place that uh, people need to be aware of? Well, I didn't come across any lim limitations. Uh, right now, well, I use Kamuna now since a few months. Right, I am still feel like I'm falling into rabbit hole. So there's there are always new things that you can do with it, and uh, I didn't uh, came across any limitations yet. Although the library itself, of course, has a few limitations. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's uh, built around our our practical use cases, and it's, um, like the version zero was about getting the technical stuff started, and now in the version one, now we have a version one dot two, uh, we focus on implementing the BPMN uh, part. So right now you can do simple uh, processes like here but if you want to send events or signals or messages into the process or the task should communicate among each other um, then you have to do this uh, right now with a simple uh, with a request library for example that Luca showed yesterday but we are going to implement uh, for convenience great great uh, next question is can you scale the robot workers uh, well no, the the workers itself are uh, not because it's uh, it's it's one file. But um, for example, if you if you check out the the North Code booth, they have a similar approach like we just uh, implemented for ourselves the last week, um, that you wrap the robot tasks inside a container or inside a service, and uh, scale them on, on on demand. So you have a service waiting for uh, for workload, and then. Once Kamunda says, okay, I have work for you, they start the robot task. All right, Marcus, probably time for one last question. I know it's short. Uh, Raul wants to know, are you doing any logging for debugging? Yes. Uh, like I showed yesterday, or I didn't show how, how we log, but we use um, Logstash and Elasticsearch and Kibana for logging. So we have a uh, simple listener and a simple uh, library for ourselves written. Um, that sends log messages uh, to to Logstash. Cool. Once again, thank you, Marcus, for contributing to RoboCon. Really appreciate it. I'm sure folks will be able to see you now in our in the after party in the uh, RoboCon venue. So look forward to doing yes. that. Yes. Awesome. Thank you very much, Sean. Bye. Thanks. Appreciate it. Cheers.